Hello and welcome once again to another training module with Resource Compliance. My name is Uriah Donaldson, an account manager and process safety consultant. Our goal as a consulting firm is to provide solutions and simplify regulation. And with that in mind, these modules are intended to provide introductory level information on a variety of process safety topics. Now in this module, we will cover a process overview of an ammonia refrigeration system. Now, after completing this module, you should understand the basic elements of how a refrigeration system works, as well as be able to identify the name and primary function of individual components in a basic refrigeration system. Now, refrigeration is the process of cooling or maintaining temperature in a space or object by removing heat. We'll be using this diagram along with some pictures to facilitate our discussion about the refrigeration cycle. Now you'll notice in this diagram that there are four primary stages, expansion, evaporation, compression, and condensation. You'll also notice storage. Now storage is labeled zero because it's not actually part of the theoretical refrigeration cycle and is not strictly needed for a refrigeration system to work, but in the real world of cold storages and warehouses and wineries, um, a storage vessel really is a necessary component. So starting off with that, the high pressure receiver, which is commonly referred to as an HPR or the HPR, is the primary storage vessel for ammonia that is not being used out in the system. Now it's important to note that this vessel or any pressure vessel for that matter, should never contain more than 85% of its total capacity. The reason for this is vapor expansion. As the ambient temperatures rise, uh, the high pressure liquid ammonia inside the vessel uh, may expand causing an increase in pressure. So by ensuring that the vessel is never more than 85% full, it leaves at least 15% of that vessel's capacity to allow for the vapor expansion. Now, when you turn on a zone of refrigeration, a cold storage room or wine chiller, for example, that zone will call out for ammonia, but that ammonia must first travel through the expansion valve. Now, the purpose of the expansion valve is to meter or to control flow into the evaporative coil, i.e. the zone of refrigeration. When this happens, high pressure liquid refrigerant is pushed through the expansion valve, causing the pressure and temperature to drop. Now, notice the change on the diagram from the orange color to the dark blue color. As, as an illustration, uh, think this, this works similar to the water faucet in your kitchen. So if you live in a city, uh, for example, your home would be connected to the city water, uh, which will have a standard water pressure of something maybe like 40 psi. Uh, when you turn the faucet at your kitchen on, it's obvious that the water is not just gushing out at 40 psi. Uh, that's because the faucet is controlling the flow. On the city side, the faucet is uh, the high pressure water of 40 psi, but on your side of the faucet, it's a much lower pressure. That's essentially what the expansion valve is doing. It's controlling flow. Now again, when you turn on a zone of refrigeration, that zone will call out for ammonia. In the case of a cold storage room, after the ammonia has traveled through the expansion valve and is now a low pressure liquid, the ammonia in the evaporative coils absorbs the heat from the air, uh, which lowers the temperature of the product and the room. Now, as a quick side note, the two pictures on this slide represent the two most common types of coils in cold storages. Uh, the top picture is a bunker style coil and the bottom picture shows three ceiling hung evaporative coils. Now there's an important principle to keep in mind as we discuss each stage of the refrigeration cycle. Uh, similar to how gravity will always cause a ball to roll downhill, so also heat energy will always move from a warmer space or object to a colder space or object. Uh, here's another illustration. If, if you have a, let's say 145 degree cup of coffee and you place a room temperature metal spoon in that cup of coffee, 
the spoon will absorb the heat energy from the coffee and become warmer, not the other way around. The coffee doesn't get warmer from your spoon, but the spoon gets warmer from the coffee because it's absorbing the heat. This is because heat energy always flows from a warmer object to a colder object. And that's the principle that's going on here. If you bring in fruit that is 90 degrees, the heat energy in the fruit will be absorbed into the ammonia and simultaneously cooling the fruit and causing the ammonia to heat up to its boiling point. And this is indicated by the subtle change in color on the drawing from dark blue to light blue. The low pressure liquid ammonia is beginning to boil as it absorbs the heat and it's changing state into a low pressure vapor. Now, remembering the principle that heat energy always moves from a warmer object or space to a colder object or space, the compressor in stage three here serves a vital function in the refrigeration cycle. That is because the low pressure vapor that has left the evaporative coils is still at a temperature well below the ambient atmosphere. And if we are to effectively reject the heat energy to the outside ambient air, uh, we have to rise or we have to raise the low temperature and low pressure vapor ammonia to a high temperature and high pressure vapor. Uh, that is where the compressor comes in. The refrigerant enters the compressor as a low pressure vapor and it is compressed and exit as a high temperature, high pressure vapor. Now, after the compressor has raised the low temperature and low pressure vapor to a high temperature, high pressure vapor, in the final stage of the refrigeration cycle, we once again see that same principle at work. Heat energy always moves from a warmer space or object to a colder space or object. So here in stage four, the condenser uses circulated water um, or ambient and or ambient air to reject the heat from the refrigerant to the outside atmosphere, causing the refrigerant to condense back into a high pressure liquid. And then it returns to the high pressure receiver. As maybe a, a final illustration to help all this make sense or help make this part sense, uh, think about boiling water on a stove. You start with water in its liquid state around room temperature. Next, you put the pot of water on the stove and turn the heat on. As heat energy moves from the burner into the water, the water's temperature begins to rise until it hits that magic number of 212 degrees and starts to boil, changing state into steam. Um, imagine you were able to catch that steam in a container and put it somewhere to cool off. In a short amount of time, that steam would condense back into the liquid form of water. Now, that last step of the steam condensing back into liquid form is essentially what's happening to the ammonia here in stage four. It's, condensed, it's condensing from that high temperature, high pressure vapor back to a high temperature, high pressure liquid. Now, once again, here is our full diagram of the basic refrigeration cycle. And remember, refrigeration is the process of cooling or maintaining temperature in a space or object by removing heat. So notice again that in this diagram, there's four primary stages, expansion, evaporation, compression, and condensation. Essentially, what is happening in a refrigeration system is we are moving the heat energy from the left side of this diagram, which represents the cold storage room or a wine chiller, um, and we're moving it to the right side of this diagram, which represents the ambient atmosphere outside. And that's how we maintain a temperature. And that concludes this module on um, an overview of the ammonia refrigeration cycle. If you have any questions about this training module or have ideas um, or other topics that you would like to see covered in future modules, you can contact us at our website, resourcecompliance.com, or call us at our office. If you are an existing resource compliance client, be sure to request a link to the quiz for this particular module from your account manager in order to document your participation and competency. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you in the next module.